even though there's you know legions of data supporting the cyclical nature of all these markets, anytime there's a fast market, usually driven by undersupply, sometimes by maybe a disease outbreak or some change in trade policy, as we're experiencing now, but you know if the prices are high, farmers jump in. If the prices are low, farmers liquidate. And those are the kind of inexorable forces in the market at work with, you know, very predictable outcomes. So the swings in the market are much less volatile in cattle because it takes many years to get in and out because the the growth cycle of the animal is so much longer versus the other extreme, which would be chickens at 42 days, roughly the birds from hatching to slaughter are ready to be sold and converted to meat. So the poultry market and the pigs are sh- are quite short as well with a short gestation and uh, maturing at five to six months. So it, it doesn't take long to ramp up your production of hogs. Certainly it doesn't take long in chickens. And anytime there's a fast market or a strong market, production gets turned up and very shortly thereafter, there's going to be oversupply. It's as predictable as taxes and debt. It's amazing how many farmers end up on the wrong side of that curve. Yeah, well, buy low and sell high if you can. That's a that's not always easy, <laughs> but it, you know it's just the way it is. Uh, as the ownership of production is more and more concentrated in you know corporate hands or people that are running farms and ranches from spreadsheets as opposed to day to day out there on the land or with the animals. There are some people that are making prudent decisions, you know, so they're reducing their numbers when the market's really strong and then waiting for the market to collapse and then they're buying back in and expanding, you know, finally matters. So there are people that are succeeding on that level, but they're managerial spreadsheet operators more likely than they are farmers that have their hands in the dirt or stewarding animals through their lives. So there continues to be a concentration of power, you might say, in this industry as well. Yes, and I think this is really the most scary thing that's happening in our food system. The idea that you can keep an intelligent animal in a cage that they can't turn around and all they can do is get up and down and think that's okay for their two or three years of their life is really, it's just beyond my ability to comprehend. So it's ugly and It's unnecessary, and it's the way of the world, though, today. (laughs) ¶¶ 